You know, there's nothing like being in the green room. It's the place to be. What's up, Megan? How you doing over there? How you doing? <laughs> hello, 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 Shay. Good to be with you this evening. Oh, so excited. So you know, excited. I'm so excited to have you here. It is an honor and a privilege, a treat and a treasure. Look, um, you have a bio, which we could be reading all day if I did that. And, you know, typically I don't like reading bios. That's not my thing. So why don't I ask the question that's I know on their mind? And their question is, who is Megan? And number two, what are you up to these days? That's the question. What are you up to? Well, Megan is a New York girl deep in the heart of Texas with a big mentoring spirit. And what am I doing these days, Shay? I am reinventing myself for the fifth time, probably, maybe more than that. So it has nothing to do with uh, the global pandemic. It has nothing to do with lockdown, but it was time that it uh, that God showed me to take that next step. So I am reinventing myself and creating a new business. Mm, reinventing yourself, creating a new business. You know, here's the question I'm just top of my mind. Um, and please share with me, what type of conversation have you been having with your colleagues behind the scenes as we go into what I would call the second half? I think the first half of this global pandemic was all about what do we do? And I think the second half we're going at is what changes are we going to make now? So my question is, what conversation have you been having with your peers to stay motivated, to stay encouraged, and also to, to really make a shift if that's necessary? Great question. Um, I have many different peers. Uh, had a brick and mortar uh, medical spa first, recently sold it. That We'll get into that later. So I have those uh, women that I have mentored for years. So I have that conversation, which is to continue and motivate, even though there is a new owner for that, they still come back with you know questions of growth, change, evolving. And then I would say that um, because shift, that has nothing to do with the pandemic. That's just a change of an ownership. It happens to people all the time, even during this pandemic. And then business colleagues, um, which are many, again, all over the United States, all over the world, actually. And uh, what people are speaking about is that in the beginning, it was almost a vacation, and then it was a time to reflect. And now it's time to take that reflecting and uh, muscle up, get going, get ready, and analyze what they should do because things are not going to go back to the way they were anytime soon and maybe never. So you cannot just assume or expect that it will be business as usual for anyone. It doesn't matter if you're e you know, easily, um, I'm gonna use the word cruising because you had a stable business on some level. It, it really matters not because even those individuals who have um, success financially, let's say, and stable, they still have seen a shift in how they're doing business. So people are analyzing how to go forward and how to continue going forward to make a difference. Yeah, you talk about going forward, you talk about making a difference. Um, let me just um, ask the question, um, what do you enjoy most about what you're doing now? We're in the green room, right? So, you know, the curious part, I know you're going to get into you're never too early, you're never too young, you're never too old to do what you want to do. I know you're going to get into all that, but at, at the heart of it, I'm just curious. And me and maybe a couple of folks that are eavesdropping right now, a couple thousand folks that are eavesdropping on this conversation want to know, what do you enjoy most about what you're doing now? Again, that's a great question. I, as I shared earlier, you know, I'm a New York girl deep in the heart of Texas with a serving mentoring spirit, but also another piece of me is I'm a creative. If I couldn't create something, I wouldn't be able to breathe, honestly. I mean, and that could just be decorating for Christmas, you know? I mean, it's just doing something creative. So what's really exciting me right now Shay, is that I'm taking the tools that I've done for so many years with uh, four businesses that I have built as an entrepreneur, and I'm using these tools, these same tools, to uh, set, uh, really establish and create a new business. But again, back to that mentoring spirit, what is so exciting for me is the young lady that you did meet the other day, Shay, mm -hmm. Elizabeth, uh, she is um, 30, and she's a very talented graphic artist. 
but she's my right hand and she I'm taking her along the ride of this and she's loving it and she's growing and she's learning and she's emulating a lot of what I'm doing in her own business. And that's very exciting to me to again, help others to grow with the tools that I've been so blessed to learn from amazing mentors over the years. You know, you, you mentioned a good point there and I know we're in the green room, right? So we're behind the scenes, we're in the green room and I know we're gonna get started in just a moment for everyone that's out there. Carol, I see you, thanks for joining, by the way. Susan, it is always a pleasure. You're in for a treat, by the way, John. I tell you, there's something for everybody right now. But you talked about someone that you're working with right now. Take a moment and talk about just the power of collaboration. I know we're going to get into you're never too old, you're never too young, you can do anything you want to do in life, but I'm curious on the power of collaboration. Two-part question. Number one, why is it important? That's an obvious answer, but we want your perspective. And number two, what do you look for when you're looking to have a collaboration or a partnership with someone? As I shared earlier um, about having a business, a brick and mortar business and a service business. Uh, with that business, I always looked for a person that actually was willing to be mentored, that was open to learn. So if a person came in with a, a closed mind, I was never interested in hiring them because I knew it would never work. So it's always a person that, like many of my friends call me a sponge because I'm always looking to learn and grow and learn and grow from others. So I'm looking for that trait in another person. And why is it important? It's because, you know, you said earlier, it's not only um, mentoring and helping and sharing and giving, but it's giving back. And so it's creating that, you know, um, living legacy, if you want to call it. And, um, and it, that doesn't matter, at, you know, how old you are, you're leaving that living legacy. Because again, I've built many businesses at different age points in my life. And it's so gratifying, Shay, to hear back from some of these folks that have worked for me over the years mm -hmm. and say, wow, you know, I can hear you still in my head, you know, can hear you talking. And so, and that some of those nuggets have stayed with them and, and helped them along the way. So it is about, you know, the, the current, the moment, but it's about that willing spirit, that willing heart. Otherwise, forget about it, as they say in New York. And then it's also that living legacy. Certainly a living legacy. Um, folks that are watching it out right now, uh, Judy Mitchell King is out there and says, we're talking to a living legacy. Uh, boss girl herself is in the house. Thank you all for tuning in. Look, we got a show. We got to get going, by the way. So we got to get going. We get on the other side. Don't worry. We're going to ask her, what are these techniques that can help you get going no matter where you are in your life? And we're going to get going in five is my favorite part, by the way. Four. I love doing this. Three, two, one. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, that's right, you, 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 the entrepreneur with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, big, big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I always say you have three visions. That's my belief. I believe first, you have a vision for yourself like the car that you want to drive, the home that you want to live in, the vacations that you want to take. And it takes resources in order, or it takes revenue in order to purchase those resources. And then there's a second vision you have. You have a vision for your loved ones. 
the ones you care the most about, um, the kids that you want to send to a school of your choice. Um, maybe some of you want to write a check for someone's health care insurance right now, or write a check for someone's mortgage, or, or write a check for the cause you believe in right now. And it takes revenue in order to what? Purchase those resources. I know we're right back to revenue. And there's the third vision you have, a third vision. You have a vision for the people you were called to serve. That's right. You were called to serve people. And I happen to be a believer. I share that often and you don't have to be, but I happen to be a believer. And imagine that you're Noah. It's a character that's in the Bible, a real person, by the way, but it's in the Bible. And, 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 and God's giving you this experience and God's giving you this expertise. And right before you get started on this mission, there's a knock at the door. And when you hear the knock, you're like, what's going on? And someone says, hey, Nora, I just want to let you know there's no hammers in the house. So now you've got a problem. There's no hammers, right? And then there's another knock at the door. And you're like, what's going on over here? Nora, <clears throat> there's no nails. Since he's saying there's no hammer, I'm going to say there's no nails either. No problem. You don't even panic. But there's that third knock at the door. Anytime there's a third anything, you're like, what is going on here? And someone says, Nora, down here, there's no wood and there's no people. Good luck on this mission. And maybe that's you right now. You've got a big heart. You, you believe so much, you say I am something every single day, but yet you don't have the resources because there's no revenue. And it's a two-part approach. So with that being said, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, no matter what time you are in the world, we have the one and only Megan herself that's here to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to provide a resource. What's going on, Megan? How are you? Good evening again. So joyful to be here today with you tonight. Well, thank you so much for joining. I always like to address the elephant in the room right at the beginning. You pick this topic, right? This, this, whole, this whole notion, a book you wrote, you're never too young or you're never too old to really live your dreams. Um, why that topic and why now? Well, first off, it's the um, subtitle is it's never too early or mm -hmm. too late. So you're not talking about age, but it's right. never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams. And so why, why that and why now? Because over the last 30 years of building businesses, yeah. I've worked and, and mentored many different ages. It wasn't necessarily um, my age. It, it, most people were much younger. And, and you know, as I got older, you know, people got younger, so to speak. But what I heard too often, too often, was, oh, I'm 25. 25. You know, it's like they're washed up, you know, because they hadn't started or they didn't have that dream or they didn't think they had that dream. Um, oh, I'm 50. Oh, I've worked, you know, for the government for, uh, you know, 40 years and I just retired. What am I going to do now? I'm too old to start something new. Or I am XYZ age, doesn't matter. And I was a, uh, let's say, an IT guy or a broker or, you know, and I lost my job. But I'm 50. What am I going to do? I hear it all the time. And it's not just through a pandemic. And so, I mean, that's heightened it for sure. But I, I hear that all the time. And one of the things I also hear is that people look at me and put me on a pedestal I'm sure this happens with you as well. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, look at her. You know, she, well, they have no idea the struggles I have gone through in each and every stage. And it started back when I was 20. And so it's never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams. But you must start and you must not stop. It's never too early. It's never too late. You must not stop. Take a moment, if you would, and tell us, you know, what has been your secret sauce, if you would, to bounce back um, after there was a challenge along the journey? It's very important to have a focus. You must have clarity. Um, I was very blessed, Shay, very early on in my life to recognize that I was a creative. Now, I didn't know specifically what I was going to create, but I knew that I wasn't going to be an accountant. I wasn't going to be a doctor. I was, you know, I, I, you know, that was not my gig. I was a creative. So I was very fortunate to understand that really as a kid, mm -hmm. uh, because I was the one that was always putting on the plays or the lemonade stand, you know, the kind of the entrepreneurial or the seeking out, you know, and 
going across the road that my mother was not happy, happy that I did, you know. So I'm an adventurer as well. So I was very, very blessed to understand that early on in my life, my DNA, so to speak. And the other dynamic for myself was that I grew up outside of New York City. So I and my folks loved going into Manhattan. They didn't have a lot of money, but we would walk around, we'd go into museums. So it was that you know, nurturing of that creative spirit in me that was such a blessing. And so with that, I then took that understanding and started um, culling that. My mom was a, a very good seamstress and she mm -hmm. was also very creative. And so um, when, let's say there was a prom and we wouldn't just make a dress from a pattern, I'd say, oh, I love those sleeves and I love that back and I'd let, you know. So she would piece it together and she taught me how to do pattern making. And so then I went to college for fashion merchandising. I thought I was going to be a designer, but then life had a different plan and that's a whole other piece <laughs> and that a setback, a setback, so to speak. Uh -huh. But back to your question, even through these different setbacks, I always, and you know, you always hear from a setback is a comeback, but I was too young to even understand that. Mm -hmm. But I never lost the the, that inner desire to create. And there were, as I said, many pivotal times in my book. I have a chapter when I was 23 and I thought my life was washed up. And I, the chapter is called Get Off the Couch because I said to myself, I cannot stay in this house any longer and just sit here. And so again, that's just a whole other, you know. But you, hold, but, but you, can't, you can't leave us hanging. You can't say there's this chapter in the book that says get off the couch and think we're going to just be like, okay. No, we got a minute or two. So we'll slow down for a minute and then we'll speed okay. up because I think that's very, very relevant. Okay. There are a number of folks okay. that are at the crossroads, especially yes. for where we are right now, depending on when they're watching this. And they might be saying that resonates with them. So, so please share. Tell us a little bit about the backstory of this couch, get off the couch, so we can walk away with the lesson that you have as well. Well, I'm going to share something that I think is important, and it's, it's a lead up to the get off the couch, Okay. is that I went to college in D.C. and out to DC. in D.C. Yay, D.C. <laughs> and, but it was at a time that the country was very polarized mm -hmm. because of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And I was very ill prepared for that. Uh, when I went to the college, so to speak, and it, so it was just very tumultuous. So I decided that I wasn't going to go back, and I got a job with a, um, a, a well, uh, in the field that I was in, I had to uh, work as um, in the field, and so instead of going back to D.C., I went to uh, FIT in New York City and got a job at Lord & Taylor in a buyer's training program. Mm. And okay, so I thought I was cool and on my way and doing things, but it was again a very, I was not prepared. And women, young women at that time in the late 60s, early 70s, we were not prepared. And it's not our parents' fault, it's just society. And we were not prepared, even if you had an entrepreneurial creative spirit, to be uh, working. You were prepared to be a wife and mother. Mm -hmm. And so I um, was a fish out of water. All my friends were still in college. Here I'm working, I'm going to school in the city. And um, I was dating this guy and, you know, the proverbial, I was dating this guy. And he said, he said, let's get married. And I initially said no. And then I said to myself, I think it's a good idea because it would take me out of this question mark. And that's what a lot of people did say. And so I got married. And so I was commuting from uh, Westchester County, which is about an hour outside of Manhattan. And I started throwing up on the 803. I was pregnant. And I, my dream, as I saw it, was ending. Mm. And so um, I had my first child. And I, the, we then bought a home in Connecticut, which was way far away with one car and um, I now am not working. And so again, I was on the couch and I said, I must get off the couch and create a life. I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea, 
But I got off the couch and I uh, went to the town and joined the women's club, uh, the newcomers women's club. And most of the women were much older than myself, but uh, I made uh, some friends and they're still very good friends. And from there, I um, started playing tennis. And then one day at the tennis courts, there was a Tupperware party. It's an important point, guys. And uh, But I needed a car and I needed money. And uh, there was a Tupperware party. I had never been to a Tupperware party, but you know it was just the gals I played tennis with, so it was very casual. And um, I walked up to the woman who was kind of doing it and taking the order forms. And I said, what do you make doing this? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, I'll have my manager call you. So the manager called, came over to my home and went through the gig and said, you know, you become a, a, you know, you buy your kit, you start doing parties. And then she had this flip chart and she came to a page where it said, uh, managers like myself get a Ford LTD station wagon, like the one in your driveway. Mm. And I went, hmm. I said, could you tell me how to do that? And she looked at me very patronizingly, like, oh, please. And I said, no, no, no. I remember saying this. I'm not interested in selling plastic bowls, but I'm interested in that car. And she looked at me and she went, okay, you could buy your kit and you start doing parties. You have consistent sales. You recruit six people and you become a manager. I said, that's it. And I, in six months, I became a manager. And why? Because I made that goal right then and there. I started working towards that goal right then and there. But I had a blessing during that season. I worked for the Tupperware Corporation for four years. My unit was called the Megaphones. And we were not the largest in number unit, but we were always the top five in sales. And I learned during that season that it's not building a business, it's building a team, and the team builds the business. I was 26 when I started this. And the distributor that I worked under, they kept commenting to me how strong my unit, as it was called, was. And it was because I put my heart into these people, but like you asked earlier, I recruited people that had a goal had an interest, they had a why. And I didn't know those things then, but I learned those things. But I recognized that if that person had a why, like I needed a car and money, I then I put my heart and soul into it. So I got off the couch and then I, as I said, I played tennis and I saw that party and it went on from there. But that was a very foundational experience in my formulation of what was to come in about uh, 10, 15 years. Wow, that's super powerful. Those folks that are out there, do me a favor, that was very powerful. Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. Pay this message forward. You can hit the share button, you can hit the watch party button. When you hit that button, go ahead and put in a, in a little box that pops up. Just put serve plus add value. Serve plus add value. It's never too early and it's never too late to live the life that you really, really want to live. And you can start wherever you are. Hit the share button, hit the watch party button. We believe in the giver's economy. The person that outgives the competition, out earns the competition. Let me say that again. The person that outgives, outgives the competition, out earns the competition. So go ahead, hit the share button. Hit the watch party button right now. Let's pay this forward to your network. Help a little boy or a little girl or a big girl or a big boy that's out there right now do more, have more, and achieve more in their life. You know, if you would, Megan, and you've said so much. I mean, this is just incredible. Take a moment and share maybe one idea um, that someone could use to really help them. You've said so much already, but don't worry, she has more. Don't worry, she has more. One idea that you can share with us that people can do in order to get started, like get, take a, the first step on a journey. So if someone's sitting out there and they're thinking, Shay, have her tell us what's something that we should do right now. I need to get going. I know what I want, but I haven't taken action yet. What would you say to that person right now? Clarity. Mm. Clarity. Get clear. Now, you might say, our friends visiting with us tonight, they might say, but I'm not clear, Shay and Megan. I'm not clear. That's the problem. I'm so confused. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Then take that proverbial legal pad out 
and write that column, write it on tablets, what you love to do. Because if you do what you love to do, you will never work a day in your life. You've heard that cliche before. But write down what you love to do, and that will help you get clarity on what you want to do. Mm. And, and again, you said this uh, to me um, about sales, meaning sales is not slimy, sleazy, yucky. It's about education. It's about sharing. It's about caring. Um, we're selling, you said, we're selling uh, our kids, our wives, you know, everyone we communicate with. So today, when I started my first business, I'll just take a little detour. Sure. I want to say this. When I started my first business in 1992, you needed a lot of capital, guys, to start a business in those days. Today, now like Tupperware, that was where I learned that kind of MLM-ish, that was a pyramid more than a MLM, but regardless, um, you did, I, that kit that I bought was 40 bucks, but when I started my first business manufacturing skincare products, you needed a lot of capital. Today, you can start a business with almost nothing. But there's so much out there and those shiny objects are confusing too. You must cr cull it down, and, and get clarity on what you want to do. But clarity is so key. You know, as Napoleon Hill says, everything begins with an idea. So as you read, as you explore, as you but write it down, you will get clarity and those aha moments that things that will lead. But nothing is a stupid idea and nothing is too small or too big. But get clear. So as I said, I was very blessed to know that I wanted to create. And that, that truly helped me over these years because whenever I would reach um, a pandemic-ish type of experience in my business or personal life in my business, because I've been an entrepreneur now almost 30 years, mm -hmm. when I would hit those moments, I would always say to myself, instead of giving up, I'd say, well, what am I going to do? You know, I just have to start again and create something else. So it was working through that challenge, working through that problem, and you know, as, as solve a problem, serve a need, as Sharon Lecter says. And that is what really makes, as I said earlier, makes my heart sing. But here's the product, creating it, taking it out, but building that team to uh, build the business. Mm, I love it. Building the team to build the business, serve others. Man, this is just this is just overwhelming, but it's so amazing, by the way. We have a segment here, by the way, Megan, Megan called Today is My January 1st. And it's one of our core philosophies that we believe in. You talk about philosophies, you talk about methodologies. And for those folks that know about the do, you can look right below the video. You can look right below the video right now and you can write those words. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. And today is my January 1st represents one of those moments throughout the day where you have to make a decision. And that decision could forever change the trajectory of your life. So you don't wait for January 1st on the calendar. We create a January 1st moment. It's a fresh start. It's a do over. It's that past, that past, that past. It does not equal our what? Future. And so when you write those words, today is my January 1st. And as you're listening right now, Megan, and you hear that, and that's ringing with you, today is my January 1st. What goes through your mind? What do you hear? I would share with our, our viewers again that goals and gratitude journals are a key and pivotal because if again as the bible said you know moses write it down on tablets you have to write things down a dream is uh is i mean a goal is a dream if you don't write it down and so you must write things down and so I find it so very helpful to me. I have my morning routine, and my t I don't get up late, but I uh, sometimes I'll get up very early. Sometimes I, you know, like at four-ish, uh, but then I'll get up some days like today six-ish. But I always start the day with my goals and gratitude, and I am weak on the exercise part, but I'm strong on the goals and gratitude. Week on the exercise. I'm working on that. So back to the January 1st part, you know, it's always like, well, then I'm going to, you know, but it's always there. But, you know, um, some some periods I'm stronger than others. You no. know? Uh, but it's absolutely part of my, you know, routine, that morning routine. Sometimes the morning routine happens later in the day, but the bottom line is 
it's I try to do some physical activity, you know, walking or, you know, I have a Pilates performer, whatever it is. You know, I try to do something. But in the morning, Shay, I always read um, this devotional book that I've had for years, and it's fascinating how I've read it this this book for years, and it it transforms itself every every time I read it. And there's a scripture uh, piece to it, and then I'll go over to the uh, the word and I'll read a little bit more about that scripture. Mm -hmm. But then I'll go to my gratitude and goals, and it really helps me center the day, to get going with the day, uh, in not only just a positive way but a clear way because again um, we all have challenges and you know I try not to take those challenges or whatever they may be into that next day I mean I don't ignore them but what I'm saying is I don't marinate and focus and pull the day down you know I go into that goals and gratitude then I attack the day <laughs> then you attack the day I love it I love it for those folks out there hit the share button Hit the watch party button. Do that right now. And when you do that, when you do that, this right now is my time. But now is my time because now is your time where you can step up. You're never too early and you're never too late to really achieve what you want and live the life that you dream of. Now, we're talking about this whole philosophy that today is my January 1st. And, and, and as you're listening out there, there are a number of folks out there right now, right now, they're excited like they were back on December 31st, right, after a couple drinks on the back of a napkin they started writing down their new year's right. resolutions and we know how that ended right we know how that ended right <laughs> for some of it ended well and for some of it ended not so well so my question to you and here's the question um you've heard this before and there's a truism and sometimes there's truth and truisms that consistency is the key consistency is the key consistency is the key and having said that what did most people struggle with most my hands are raised consistency i got both of them raised so my question to you is what do you share with with your clients what do you share with folks in order for them to be consistent and for them to hashtag stay the course commitment you have to be committed to what you are working towards when i um saw I, I initially saw the handwriting on the wall that I was going to have to lock the door and turn away we called people for the first two weeks in March and that was over a hundred people Shay to say I'm so sorry we're gonna to have to cancel your appointments oh my goodness gracious but after my staff left kiss kiss hug hug talk to you on Monday uh, I said to myself I was sitting there in the boutique of this mm -hmm. uh, spa and I I said to myself, I can't go dark. I can't go dark. So meaning commitment to what I always do. And so every day, and the funny thing is, I wore the same dang thing every day. I would wash it, because <laughs> I didn't have to impress anybody. You know, it was black slacks, a black turtleneck, and a black uh, sweater. And um, But I had the week before, and when I knew, I wanted to close before the governor told us we had to close because I wanted it not to be chaotic and I wanted to prepare the staff and I wanted to prepare the uh, clients. Like I said, we called them and uh, postponed and did a spreadsheet of their appointments. But I also got a lot of product into the uh, building because we ship all over the country. Mm. So by not going dark, I was there every day to answer the phone, go into the emails, and if, as long as FedEx was open, I was open. So I shipped all over the country, curbside, you know, started to happen and things like that. Mm -hmm. And in April, we sold almost as much as we did in March. And we were closed. Wow. Wow. And that's because I showed up. Consistency. Consistency. And so then during that season, and I had no idea this was going to happen, Shay, zero, uh, that I had just finished a Facebook Live with my staff to keep them engaged. We started doing uh, what we called the pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey guys, you want to do something? Let's do something together. And, uh, you know, Sarah in her bathroom putting eyelashes on and Gigi doing peels and, um, you know, this one doing, really. And people loved it. They really did. And so um, I had just finished that with the girls and this man came to the door. I thought he was going to buy a gift card. Mm -hmm. And I opened the door, I said, may I help you? And he said, 
I'm so and so, and I was wondering if he asked if I was Megan DiMartino. I said yes. He said um, I was wondering if you would have any interest to sell me your business. Excuse me. <laughs> so, March 31st, say in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. He came to my front door of the business, and so I made it very clear to this guy that as we talked, not just that day, but I didn't want to sell the trade name, um, which is federally trademarked. I didn't want to sell the product line. I didn't want to sell the website with the shopping cart. He said fine, because he really, that wasn't what he was interested in. He was interested more in an asset purchase of the location, you know, the lease, the staff, the uh, database, and the equipment, and that type, and the finish out. He was mm -hmm. interested in that. So it, it worked out nicely for both of us. And he, uh, per, so that, but if I hadn't been there, consistency, commitment, if I had not been there, I'm not saying he would never have circled back, but I don't know. He might have found something else because in the meantime, he bought another spa, meaning as we were negotiating, he bought another spa in Austin. We're about 20 miles north of Austin. Okay. So he could have bought a couple more of that way and maybe said, you know, I've spent enough. Uh, that's, you know, this Georgetown place, forget about it. So I was there answering the door. I was consistent and committed to not going dark and staying positive for my staff because I knew eventually they would come back. And I was, you know, as that old um, uh, ad, you know, keep the home fires burning. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew I had to do that, keep that positiveness going for them. We continued doing e blast to the clients. Um, you have large database, you know, being in front of them and giving them positiveness. And during that season, I said to myself, I must put this book on the website free because you can buy it on Amazon. But I wanted people to be able to buy it to give them hope and possibilities just over the horizon. It's never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams. So I, I honestly, the most important thing is committing to once you have that idea and the definitiveness of purpose and do it, execute it, then you must stay committed to it. Burn the boats. You must do that. Or you're going to waffle and flounder all over the place and not finish anything. So true. So true. You know, um, for folks that are listening right now, they may be wondering, one, um, what type of clients does Megan look for these days? So tell them the type of client you look for. And number two, how can they best connect with you? Um, how can they connect with you and, and your team? Please share. Well, as I, I just mentioned, I sold the brick and mortar. Yeah. But it was interesting, Shay, that I knew in my spirit, and you have to listen to that too, guys. As a, I'll share that in another you know, yeah. uh, time but uh, in conversation. But I knew at the end of last year that change was happening again. You get those aha moments. And I knew that things were going to change. And that uh, I was working on a business course to share with you all because I have a lot of information, a lot of structure, a lot of um, tools to help you build, uh, start, scale, and sustain your business with the five C's. So I started that business course last year, but I knew in my spirit that I needed to finish this book, which I had started in 2017 and was told to write it in 2011. But I circled back last fall and finished the book and uh, p put it up on Amazon in December and in January went to number one on Amazon. Yay! Congratulations! Yay. Yes! Yay! So, the client. So, I, back to the course. Uh, it's not just an individual in the spa industry, which is fine, but I uh, um, want to help others. Like, I have several clients now that I'm working with that are um, business. One is a financial analyst, and the other is a, a person that is in a transition, like I shared earlier. And not because she lost her job, but meaning she had retired, like I had shared, mm -hmm. and she wasn't ready to retire. So we're, we're crystallizing what she's interested in, that clarity piece, and both of them are at that beginning stage. So I'm, uh, that is what I want to do. I want to work with people. Uh, regardless of your age, regardless of where you are, but it, to help you start, scale, and sustain your business. 
And the five C's are basically clarity, uh, courage, confidence, commitment, and compassion. And really the compassion, absolutely important to be compassionate for others, but it is imperative to be compassionate for yourself. And today, that is such an important commodity that people must give themselves because they're beating themselves up terribly on every level. You know, the COVID-12, that we're talking about habits, you know. Um, you know, so stop eating, you know, um, chips and whatever and go to the gym. You can go to the gym now, you know. So it's a choice, it's a decision. But it is that give yourself the break, that compassion. But so they can reach me on megandimartino.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an area there that you can, uh, as I shared a minute ago, you can get hope and possibilities just over the horizon. It's never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams free on that website. It's a PDF. It's an e-book. And then with that, though, just put in your information and um, love to and comment. And we, I will get back to you. Mm, I love what you're doing there. That is like super incredible. Everyone go out there and visit her website right this very moment. Tell them the website once again, please. It's very simple. It's Megan DiMartino. And Megan is M-E-G-A-N DiMartino, D-I-M-A-R-T-I-N-O. I say Al Martino, you know, so it's D-I. And, uh, but MeganDiMartino.com. Man, I love your spirit to give. I love your spirit to serve. For those folks that are out there, we're moving into what's called the rapid fire segment. And the rapid fire segment is when I get to ask any question that's on my mind and Megan can decline or she can answer, right? And, and one of my favorite questions to ask, and it's on my mind, and it might be on your mind too for the regular listeners and for those folks that are watching for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. But the question I always like to ask is, of all the mentors you've had, Megan, and you've had so many along this journey of life, What's one idea that you learned from any one of your mentors that you can share with us, the audience, so we take away something that was passed to you and now you're passing it on. And for you, you the viewer, you the person, hit the share button right now. Hit the watch party button. Like pay this message for it. Share it right now to your network. Share it to someone else. Megan's here to serve. She's here to give. And, and for those that are ready to get the nuggets, do like this. Put your hands out. Say yes. She's bringing it to yes, 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 lean in, lean in, lean in right now, because she's about to drop it on you right now. Share it with us, please. I have two, Shay. Mm -hmm. uh, one is my father, uh, Ray DiMartino, Italian um, uh, guy, his father, Al Alberto DiMartino, was an Italian immigrant, and he was a, um, he came to the States at 16, at 16, by himself. Uh, he was a twin, and um, he came with his uh, twin, fan, the gal that had taken care of him. And But bottom line was, he was very creative, and he um, became, not, he wasn't a barber, but he worked at a barber shop in a fancy hotel in New York City. And he, um, this is my grandfather, and he basically uh, was very charismatic, and a wealthy guy invited him to come out to Long Island, pay for he to start a business, a barbershop, and so my father and his brothers and my grandmother uh, moved out to Long Island. Fast forward many years later, after the Second World War, my father um, got a job with a large paper company selling essentially products to the medical industry, paper though, mm -hmm. and he was selling wet strength tissue, one of the products for underbedding for um, hospitals, mm -hmm. and he said, I bet this would work for perming because he saw his father doing perms with those machines, mm -hmm. you know, and they used cloth at the end. You can look at the, like the uh, Roaring Twenties and all of that. And so he said, I bet this would work for perming. He cut it up himself, brought it to salons in the New York area where his territory was, and said, try this. It was one-tenth the cost of what they were using. They were currently using a mesh, which was a non-woven material, which was very unsanitary. They uh, rinsed it out and reused it, so it's disgusting. And so this was disposable and it was very inexpensive. So us children were packing end papers in our basement. Mm. So his creative world um, poured out to me. And as my mother said years later, Ray, she's more like you than any of our other children. So he was a, a very strong mentor to me of, like you used the word earlier, pivoting. He, had, he, was a, he didn't have any money, he had four children. You know, and he just had, again, that drive, Shay, and that goal, 
and he used his creativity to put a successful business together. And I could go on and on about that, but the point is he was one of my mentors. So obviously that came from his dad, um, but he was truly a mentor. But he also was a, a person that enjoyed people Mm -hmm. and exploration so again things that i shared earlier so he was truly i didn't see that earlier in my life as we don't appreciate our parents but i uh as i grew and grew my own career i saw that he was truly a mentor the other is jesus christ um i did not know um jesus as a younger person and i um, got to know him on the damascus road in my 40s and um, again, I'm not a church, church person. I love going to church, but I love Jesus and the relationship, but also the power of the Holy Spirit. And I lean on the, the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And through many of my challenges, I just am quiet. And this is what I'm going to share with you guys tonight. Be quiet and listen to that small voice, that small voice. And I'm going to leave you with one thing with this. May I? Yes. Um, I was at a crossroads. I sold my first uh, seven-figure business, uh, uh, my first brand, Glycolic, to the lab that manufactured the products. And I ran it contractually. And there was a lot of negativity around um, that because they were bought out, and they said, do you want to buy it back? I mean, the mm. sale was fine. That was easy. But then as I was running the division, I was an employee, they said, do you want to buy it back? And I entered a buyback structure, and this company that bought this lab was a Fortune 400 company. So I, um, everything that I did was um, I paid for, it, meaning it was uh, I did all the cost of goods and my travel expenses and the like out of the money that the line uh, was producing, and it was uh, over $2 million at this point, or close to $2 million. And that they said, why are we selling this brand? Because it was all profit, but it was very skewed. So they did what's called a hostile takeover. Mm. So my baby that I was buying back, and I had finished paying them for it, and it was time to get the, biz the business out of there, I, we had gone into ma uh, inventory, and I, I wanted to share this one pivotal negative piece because, again, I said earlier, people say, oh, you know, uh, two seven-figure businesses. Okay, great. But, but, again, it also goes back to that, that absolute definitiveness of purpose and that desire um, that, that you know, that idea and that you know. And so basically speaking, with this hostile takeover, I had an attorney, I got a settlement, but I did not know if I had it in me. And this is one of those crossroads, Shay, that I was speaking about. I did not know if I had it in me to do it again. And this was 1997. And I was, it was Memorial Weekend, and I was in my home, and I opened this little... Catholic prayer missile that I had as a child, and there was a note card in it. It was like if I sent you a thank you note, mm -hmm. and in it was a typed note, typed. And it said, the call to new beginnings is ringing in the air. It's reaching through the mist of circumstances everywhere. Stand tall. Take the first step. The second and third step will be revealed to you. Psalm 37. And I, I have been a keynote speaker and uh, an educator in the spa arena and medical spa arena, done many, many, um, you know, speaking structures where I would say, listen for his voice. He would fax you if he could. You know, that shows my, the time. Okay. okay. But when this mess started happening with this lab where I saw the handwriting on the wall that they wanted to keep it, Okay. I opened my Bible, I said, Father, give me a word, and it was Psalm 37. Mm. And here, the call to new beginnings is ringing in the air. See, this is for someone right now. The call for new beginnings is ringing in the air. It's reaching through circumstances everywhere. Everywhere. Stand tall. Take the first step. 
the second and third step will be revealed to you. Wow. Super powerful. Those folks out there, hit the share button. Hit the watch party button right now. The time is now. They have to do what? Take the step. Is that what I heard? They have to take the step. Everyone do me a favor. When you hit that share button and you hit that watch party button, just write those words. Take the step. Hashtag Megan DiMartino. Say just take, take the step. You got to hear the voice, but take the step. Now is your time. Megan, I want to say thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. You are truly amazing. You're incredible. Um, I'd like for you to do two things, by the way. We got to have you back. I mean, this is like, this is like the way you share it allows us not only to hear it, but you give us step by step exactly what we can do. Here's what I'd like for you to do, Megan, if you can. Um, number one, I'd like you to share once again how folks can connect with you. So that's very important to share your website. And then number two, have your closing comments. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I ask and people can't do it for a lot of reasons, right? Schedule is busy, very tight. They've got to jump on another call, do something else. But Megan, is, she's right here present. She's like, Shay, I'm all in. Like, I'm here with you. And she's present in this moment. She says, Shay, I'll share some closing thoughts and comments to help empower, to help inspire another entrepreneur or another mom or another dad or a single mom or single dad that's out there. So, so you pay attention. You, you, you listen with new ears right now and you watch with new eyes as she shares her final thoughts. So, Megan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Once again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Can't wait to have you back. Over to you for your final thoughts and comments. You're incredible. Thank you so much, Shay. Well, the website is Megan, M-E-G-A-N, D-Martino, D-I-M-A-R-T-I-N-O, dot com, Megan D-Martino, dot com. And I just want to share this with you folks, that, that uh, the book is my story. Yes, it's a timeline of a New York girl born in 1950, through the 50s, the 60s, great time to grow up on Long Island. I went to the Beatles concert when I was 14 at Chase Stadium. Um, so there was a lot of freedom and a lot of very uniqueness to it. Uh, but regardless, I shared a few of my challenges. And it gives you a timeline of starting businesses. It's starting, um, I was a single parent. I was married. I, as I shared, I had two daughters, as I shared. But in 1980, I divorced my first husband, and in 19, I was not married again for years and years and years, had no interest in married, getting married, and in 2006, I met Paul Tyler here in Georgetown, Texas, married him, and in 2009, he had a stroke, and it threw him into a condition called Lewy bodies, which is a Parkinson's form of dementia, three years of hell, and in, uh, he passed uh, September 29, 2011, and after he passed, guys, and which was in the middle of the night, four-ish probably, and it started to dawn an hour or so later, and the backyard was full of white butterflies. I mean, I said, am I hallucinating? What is going on? And I share this because I just prayed, what, should I, what are you trying to tell me? And I heard, share your story. Now, that's very general. What story? That evening with him passing, my life story. So it took me 10 years to really do this. But you have something in you that has been stirring in you that you know you need to do. And it, and it doesn't mean writing a book. That doesn't mean, but today you can do small little eBooks. There's so much information on the internet. Um, so much, I mean, webinars by amazing people. Uh, so, and glean that information like Shay's show, my show. There's so much information by amazing people and everyone wants to give back and help others. And so it is, so I really welcome you to go to megandemartino.com and download that book, Hope and Possibilities, because without hope, there is no today. Because if there's hope in tomorrow, there's power in today. So as you have that hope, it gives you that power for today to write down those notes, to glean that clarity of what it is in your heart. I mean, you may have been a stockbroker and or a financial analyst and you they downsized. And now you say, what am I going to do? I'm 55 and what am I going to do? And I, I've been on uh, several podcasts where these guys, this is where they're at. And they were creative enough to say, 
I'm going to do something. Like I said, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to do something, and I'm going to be productive. And through that, they're figuring out their next step. Take that first step. The second and third step will be revealed to you. So just do those morning, you know, uh, that rich, you know, grow, uh, uh, goals and gratitude, because gratitude is that, again, that marinade of, because you can say, well, what am I gra grateful for today? You know, I mean, I lost my job, or this happened, or that happened. My husband just passed, this happened. Look at it, everything from a positiveness. And one of the last things my father said to me, um, my mother passed first, they, the, the notebook, she passed, and four months later he passed it. She was 96, he was 94. And he said to me, Megan, you know, you have a happy heart. You're so lucky. And I said, wow. Oh. Okay. And he said, you, you, no matter what has happened to you, you have always had a happy heart. And I wish that for you tonight, that you look at things from a positive mental attitude, as Napoleon Hill says, and look at things from that position. It is a decision. It is not, does not come uh, naturally for many people. And there are times that I truly have not wanted to have a happy heart, meaning I was like this. But then I up-level, think it through, lean on the Lord, put some scripture in my brain and my heart, and, and change my attitude. It's having that faith in something more than myself. So I hope that helps someone tonight. It certainly has blessed me. And for everyone out there right now, hit the share button, hit the watch party button. You've been listening to the one and only Megan. Has she not thrown down? Yes, you can do this. How do I know that? Because for you... The best is yet to come. Today is your January 1st. You're never too early. Today is your January 1st. You're never too late. And for you, you, the entrepreneur, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the network marketer, you, the small business owner, you, the person that has a big heart to do good in the world, for you, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And with that being said, for those folks who know who's doing all that screaming, who's doing all that yelling, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, don't remember, time is long. Life, on the other hand, is very, very short. So we got to live in the moment. And we got to make it count. God bless and I wish you success. We're out of here. Peace. Thanks a lot, Megan. You're amazing. You. We'll see you Thank again you. soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. We're gone. Peace. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.